The TDA, developing people, improving young lives. The main reason why it's difficult to teach grammar is that the people who are on the ground teaching grammar are people who haven't been taught grammar themselves. Another reason is the people who are teaching English today in our secondary schools are people with literature degrees. And probably in most of those literature degrees, they didn't learn anything about language. So it's no surprise that it's problematic for them to teach grammar. It's like asking somebody to teach maths when they haven't learned any algebra. Advanced skills teacher Liana Swanton has developed a creative approach to teaching grammar and punctuation that's engaging and lively for the students here at Uplands Community Technology College in East Sussex. I think grammar has a bad reputation because it's traditionally seen as a really dry area of English. Lots of English teachers, I think, enjoy the creative aspect of teaching English. Um, and I would argue that in order to be creative when you're writing, you have to have secure punctuation and grammar because the punctuation is how you convey meaning. These green bits all come from the middle of a sentence and that's what we're going to be looking at first thing this morning is why do we use subordinate clauses, how can we embed them and we're going to be, um, in quite an interactive way, looking at how we can write different sentences. Um, the first activity that we looked at was embedding a subordinate clause into a sentence. So the students were given um, cards, some on green card, some on red card, and we looked at making sentences with just two pieces of the red card and then inserting the subordinate clause, which is on the green card, in the middle. So I demonstrated one with a group of students and then the rest of the class had to organise themselves into sentences which made sense. So who could be grinning? Who have we got? I know that the Professor Benson one goes with... Excellent, one. good girl. So, Professor Benson announced that the exam would be tomorrow. Sorry. If Professor Benson is announcing that an exam is going to be tomorrow, how do you think he might say that? What expression might he have on his face? Very good. He might be grinning from ear to ear. So, Hannah, Professor Benson, grinning from ear to ear, announced the exam would be tomorrow. The idea of doing that is that when they come to write, something in their brain might think, oh, there was that lesson with the red and the green card, and as they write, they should hopefully think, right, these two bits are the red bits, that's the green bit, so I need the commas around the green bit in the middle. Um, so their writing becomes much more sophisticated, and instead of lots of short sentences, they're able to embed extra information in the middle of a longer sentence. You've got to get the punctuation right, haven't you? So every time that you write a subordinate clause from now on, I want you to think, right, which are my two red bits? They're the essential bits. They make the sentence. I can take this part out, and I can still have my nieces playing in the garden. It still makes sense. But I can slot this in. I put two commas around it, and I've made a subordinate clause, which makes sense. Top tip number two. Um, the next activity we were looking at commas because uh, it's a really key issue for lots of students. They've been taught them before and they use them all over the place but they don't actually use them in the correct places and they don't really know why they're using them. But it was about weeding out some of the um, regular mistakes that they make. So the rules for using commas were displayed around the room with some examples and in pairs they had to go around and add their own example. So following the pattern. Um, Anna C almost asleep. Um, Sophie was confused, almost concussed. <laughs> That's good. Um, um, yesterday, which was my birthday, it was raining. Oh, good. Uh -huh. Even. <laughs> yeah, Sophie was confused, not stupid. <laughs> not stupid. <laughs> OK, next. Um, lots of the students said they found it really useful because they hadn't really stopped to think about commas for a long time since they were maybe at primary school. And it kind of refocused them and made them realise, oh, right, that's why I'm using a comma. Um, so I think that was really useful for lots of them and maybe we won't get them using commas instead of full stops anymore. Top tip number three. Because writing which doesn't coordinate with your speaking isn't stuck together sounds very disjointed. And we need to be able to make our writing flow. What I'd like you to do is read this um, text that's on your desk in pairs 
and I'd like you to stop and switch at each, each piece of punctuation. Um, the third activity we looked at connectives, which is really important for cohesion, so making their writing flow. And at the moment, lots of them will use and, but, so, because, and these really simple connectives. And I wanted them to start using more sophisticated ones. Connectives, we might say, are the glue that holds your writing together. Okay, so here I've got a whole bunch of connectives. There's lots on the wall behind you there. There's lots on the wall here. So I made these the connectives look vaguely like some kind of form of glue. And they had to have a conversation and make sure they used the connective to make their next point. On the other hand, screen form takes away your individuality. I think it would be better if we didn't have uniform because everyone would be able to feel like themselves. Meanwhile, if we had uniform, everybody would be equal. I like wearing Especially... Again, it's a really memorable activity because I think about passing these glue sticks around and using the more sophisticated vocabulary. We might use however. We might use therefore on occasion, but we don't use a lot of these words. And that is what makes the difference at GCSE between, say, a C grade and an A grade. Top tip number four! And each group of five is going to get some evidence. The evidence is some sentences with semicolons in. I want you to look at these really carefully and try to work out how are semicolons used. Right, the fourth part of the lesson was looking at a semicolon, which is a really tricky piece of punctuation which lots of students haven't mastered. And um, it's, it's probably quite easy for a teacher to stand at the front and explain how to use it and then get them to write some of their own. But I thought it'd be more interesting for them to come up with the rules themselves so that they were doing sort of investigative learning so that they had to look at how it was used and then decide what the rules were and then apply it and use their own, create their own examples. <laughs> so we've got some rules now. Okay, so can you write an example? Okay. How about you two do some? Yeah. You can write one about football. So a sentence with a semicolon and a connective this time. Football is good. Yeah. Semicolon. However, it is not as good. However, it is not as good as rugby. Um, mountain biking is great. However, it costs a lot of money. So we want to be able to show that we can join our sentences in more sophisticated ways. And it's a really simple technique, isn't it? I'll take out the so and I'll put a semicolon. Put your hand up if you think now that next time you do some writing, you would be able to use a semicolon successfully. If you think that you've understood how they're being used and you could probably use one. Excellent. Rory, tell me your rules that you've got written down. Um, use a semicolon instead of a connective. Good. To add to a sentence, yep. to combine two sentences, Good. when comma is not enough but full stop is too much, yep. and they can be used in conjunction with connectives. Brilliant. When Tony went to the park, it rained. He stayed anyway. Very good. So when Tony went to the park, it rained. He stayed anyway. Why is that better than writing full stop and stayed anyway? Because that would be stopping and that's too much. So too much of a pause, too much of a break in the Top tip number five! Incorrect punctuation, I would say, is worse than incorrect spelling. If you spell something slightly wrong, so if you miss off an O, or if you make a mistake between a V and an F, for instance, it doesn't actually stop me understanding what you've written, because I can guess what word you're trying to write. If you make a mistake with your punctuation, you can completely change the meaning. Um, the fifth one was the one that most students found most interesting, I think, based on the end of the lesson, because I gave them a text which had no punctuation in it and told them what punctuation was missing. And they had to try and insert it, and it was a real eye-opener for some of them to realise how difficult it is to understand a piece of writing without punctuation. So it really focused them in on the importance of those little dots and dashes and other marks. At the top, you've got a table which tells you all of the punctuation that was in that paragraph or in those few paragraphs. You will need to use a pencil for this because I suspect you might put them in and then change your mind. You've got to include 16 commas, 15 full stops, one colon, two sets of brackets, four sets of quotation or speech marks, four hyphens, two question marks and two exclamation marks. So discuss it in pairs and see if you can punctuate that text.
Oh, this is so hard. <laughs> we have a text like this without punctuation. What's it like to read? Very hard. Very hard. <laughs> and you have to fit it in, in the right places. Yeah, and you don't know where to pause, you don't know which parts of sentences go with which parts, so it becomes really confusing. And that's why I would say that punctuation is one of the most important things for you to get right. And you can see that she uses lots of different types of punctuation. So it's using punctuation for an effect. You've got to try and second guess the effect and then get the punctuation in the right places. Everything's too bright and hot and exposed. Full stop, my clothes. Have you worked out how many of these you've used? No, not yet. Do you want to count them up and see what you've got left to put in? One, two. I'm not two, sure. You've got two sets of brackets though, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we can put the brackets there. My issue, I'm not sure I like that word, with summer, comma, is that everything's too bright. We're a bit stuck on where you put the hyphen. No, yeah, we haven't put any hyphen in. We have 15 commas. We haven't put any of them in. Hyphen. Autumn season, new boots on Jack. New boots. At least. Um, how the poet would have so eloquently put it. <laughs> So, what is this saying? What's this bit say here? Uh, put that in simple words for me. As the poet so eloquently put it, actually means what? As the poet said. Yeah. So, if that said, as the poet said, and then this bit's what the poet said, what do we mean? If you look at that quantity of writing and it has that much punctuation in, what can you learn from that about your own writing? Don't use enough. Good. We probably don't use enough. And probably most of us, if we want to communicate clearly, we should be trying to use more punctuation. When we speak, one of the ways that our listeners understand what we're talking about is by the way we pause and by the way our voices go up and down. Now, when you're reading writing, there are no pauses, and the reason that it's important to be able to use punctuation skillfully is because that way you will allow your writers easily to decode what you're saying so that they can concentrate on the meaning instead of concentrating on the code. The great thing about teaching English is that you can apply what you're teaching to the modern world and make it relevant to their lives so that they can start to understand why this is applicable to them. And every now and then the student learns something and it's just fantastic. My favourite thing was like going around the room with the writing on the pieces of paper, trying to put in commas in the senses. I think active learning is the best way of learning because it keeps you occupied. My favourite thing was when we had the pieces of red and green card with a bit of sense on and we had to make them into one big sentence. Oh, I really liked learning about commas because I'm really bad at using commas and I just put them wherever. Before this lesson today, I didn't really know much at all about semicolons. I knew what they looked like, but I didn't know how to use them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. It's been really good. I think other teachers might be surprised if they taught grammar in this more active way because the students go with you and you find that they start enjoying it and they start having these little learning epiphanies every now and then saying, oh, I suddenly understand how to use a comma. Or um, like Nick said today, I knew what a semicolon looked like, but I didn't know how to use one before today. And it's those kind of things that make teaching lovely and a great job. All of Liana's resources are available to download on the Teachers TV website at www.teachers.tv.